Hello. Welcome to the stream. I wasn't talking. <laughs> Playing Saint, it's been a while. Every every time I play Saint, it's been a while. I have a I have an idea. I I, I was theory crafting about ten seconds ago. Um, basically, Saint can bring an item with them into the into new runs. Right. And usually I had a lantern in my stomach. And the lantern was not necessary, but it's kind of nice to have. Like you, you never have to worry about the cold, but usually you move fast enough for that to not be a problem. So, like, lantern was nice, but not necessary. The other option was a bubble weed, and you could use the bubble weed to take an alternate path. And this path would basically be, um, I might have tried to do something. It's the path, like the secret path in farm raids that Rivulet can take because it's underwater. Um, that you take instead of the deer, but of course, um, they can just use a geek instead and it's faster. So I was thinking, if I don't need a lantern, right, the lantern is not necessary. What is another item that I could bring that would be useful? Any item in the game that Saints can get and put in their stomach, which one would be the most useful in the speedrun? And I was thinking maybe that would be a spore pump. Because centipedes, biters, those creatures said to be a problem in small tunnels. They can block your path and get in the way. And be, they basically like lose you a ton of time just because like one creature is in a bad spot, right? So I was thinking, what if we just brought a spore puff with us? And then if there's ever a centipede or spider blocking your path in a tunnel, just kill them with the spore puff, right? Fire egg, I think is too destructive. If you're stuck in a tunnel with a creature, you're gonna blow yourself up too. And there's not too many large creatures that you would want to kill that also wouldn't take too long. Like I guess mirror spurs, right? But if there's mirror spurs blocking your path, um, like using um, using a fire, it just takes too long. You have to, like you have to like aim, you have to take it out of your stomach. You have to like throw it and like don't mess up your throw. Wait for it to blow up and then you know, now they're they're dead. You can move on. But all of that. Whereas, I mean, I guess that would save time still if you use it in that kind of situation. But in, I think it's more impactful in a situation where there's, um, like a creature blocking your path in a tunnel. Because in that case, if they don't move, you could lose, like, who knows how long, like a minute just waiting there for them to move, or you die, you know. So I'm thinking Spore Puff is probably the strongest option, considering that centipedes and spiders tend to be annoying in tunnels. If anyone else has any ideas, I'm open. I guess just like a regular grenade could work too. It doesn't have the delay that a fire egg does, and it might be able to stun mirror spurs. Whoops, why am I just going in here? We're going in this direction.
Serum is really annoying. The, the poles are really hard to grab onto. If, <clears throat> if Saint Summer had access to a Singularity Bomb, that could also be a good option for killing various creatures. Like a more extreme version of the Fire Egg slash Grenade. Right. I don't think you can get a Singularity Bomb for Saint. Hello. I'm talking about what items Saint could bring into a new run. Because for a long time I've had a, a lantern in my stomach for Saint. Um, but it's not necessary, right? You can do the whole run without a lantern. You won't die to the cold or anything. Um, so that means you have a slot to bring any item you want into a new run. And I'm not bringing um, a bubble weed either. So if you have any ideas for an item that could be useful in this run, um, I'm open to suggestions. But I'm thinking that a spore puff is probably the best option for if you ever get blocked by a centipede or a spider in a, in a tunnel where you can't really get past them. Oh shoot, oh wait, I, I, do I have Yeeks enabled? I hope I have Yeeks enabled. <clears throat> also, this is my first time using the new Yeeks in a Saint run. The thing is that there's, there's spore pumps right here, right? It would only take like a second to, to swallow one. But if I, if I could just go and bring one to a new run, I might as well. Let's give it to Yeeks. I have used the Yeeks for Gourmand though, so I am kind of used to how they work. Unless they, they mess with this kind of movement. A bomb. I was also thinking a bomb. Potentially, but you you never you wouldn't be able to use that in tunnels, right? That's too dangerous. Or like mirror spurs, I guess. But Saint doesn't Saint isn't very good at throwing. Um, that's the speedrunner's job. But um, like th trying to throw a grenade is is very dangerous. You're very likely to just, just stun yourself. That this feels like it's better than it was before. Those, those pounces lined up very well. Could you bring a Neuron and start the run with the, the Glow? Actually, that's probably the next best option. Because there are some pretty dark rooms filled with spiders that the, the Neuron would help with. That's more of a quality of life thing. Yeah, the, the Zeke feels way more consistent than, um, than before the patch. I'm very blue right now. 
that don't have a lantern anymore. How <laughs> easy it is with the Yeet. It's I'm I am enjoying it. The fact that you can actually go through farm raids without deer. Very nice. Um flashbang, I feel like it's you know, could be useful for um for like spiders and tunnels, could be useful for mirror birds. But um um spitter spiders aren't affected, which I mean there's only like two spitter spiders in the run that are a problem. Three, maybe if you include um, Rubicon. Hello, hello. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, getting it getting a getting a spider corpse actually helps. Because the tunnel that you have to climb through to get into filtration. There's usually spiders in that tunnel, and if you could kill one with a flashbang or a spore puff, it would actually make the whole area faster. Oh, because of the weird physics. But you can't bring a spider a corpse into a den and then bring it back out. It's too heavy for saints to carry. I forget which one of these eeks that I get. I think it's this. It's one over here. It's either that eek if it like comes out really early, or it's one of these eeks, and you can just do this. Excuse me. Oh shoot, is this a problem? Are these eeks like- oh, there's two of them in here, that's why they're being annoying. Okay. Jellyfish, Electric Sphere, and Gourmand, and you can't kill a King Vulture. Well, good luck. That was pretty cool. That little jump on the pole there. The, the the reason that I think uh, I think a spore puff would still be better than a flashbang, just because of centipedes. Because there's one centipede in particular that uh, blocks your path in subterranean, um, and like a lot of runs have ended or lost time there. Just having one spore puff would make that no longer a problem, and it could also work against spiders if they are a problem. And also that tunnel. And that leads to filtration. I think there can also be centipedes there, but maybe just a red centipede. In which case, it would not be very useful because it would still take forever to clear them out. Singularity bomb, if you could. Actually, that's funny. I just throw one singularity bomb, clear out all the spiders in that room. I guess actually, hmm, that spider room in farm rays, you could get rid of all the RNG just by bringing one flash. <laughs> yeah, one one flashbang could clear out all the spiders in that room and make it very consistent. Spitters would still be a problem, though. Oops. Fall to your death. It's kind of hard to test out all these options, considering that you- I guess you could use, like, Beastmaster just to like, spawn in. Um, just spawn in whatever item at the start of the run to test it. 
<laughs> when does the thing already not solve the problem? Centipede. I'm not testing it here, of course, because I have creatures turned off. I'm also thinking, what would, what could an item, or how could an item help in Rubicon? Because Rubicon is very dangerous, mostly because of three rooms. Well, actually, more than that, but there, there, there's three rooms at the very end that are particularly dangerous. I'm it's not the right path, by the way. Um. There's a room with two red lizards, or I guess there's like four rooms with two red lizards somewhere within those rooms. Um, I guess a flashbang could help think past them. I don't know if, I, I think that works, right? That, that should work to blind the lizards so they can't see you. Um, that room at the end with the orange lizards, that's a huge pain. I don't think much would help against that because you're in a very confined space if they are a problem. Bombs wouldn't work. Flashbang wouldn't work because you would still have to get past them, like physically. Firecracker? True. That would probably be the best option, actually. Just for the, um, the wrong path. Just for the orange lizards, though. Is there is there a firecracker that you can get for entering Rubicon? Maybe there's one in subterrain. I don't know, probably not. I don't think there's any in a good spot that you can just pick up along the run. And I don't think it'd be worth bringing a firecracker from the very beginning of the run just for that last room. I think a sport, a sport buff is still more versatile. In sky? Yeah, there's, there's that one. Is there a is there potentially a firecracker in Rubicon? I know there's like lanterns and, and like fruit. Uh, probably not though. I need to learn this room layout better. Something in run would help us. There's a lot of different options. Is there one in Rubicon? <laughs> Microsoft bird. Yeah, I think it would need to be like on the route. I it'd probably be too um out of the way anywhere. Like, I mean, maybe if you can go like one room, but even then, it's probably not worth it. You enter subterranean from shoreline, and then you go down filtration to where the depths normally is to get into Rubicon. So any fire, or actually there are, there are some, right? Right when you enter subterranean from the shoreline gates, there's there's a few right where the centipedes spawn. You could pick those up. I mean, the centipedes might be there. <laughs> Okay, I think that's probably the best option because the the orange lizards are a huge pain. Um, they can, they can really 
Like, if they are in the tunnels, then you, you need to spend a good amount of time clearing them out with the ability and then push them through the tunnels. But even then, you know, I don't know if the progress record would work. I don't know. I don't know how effective they are. That's worth testing if you can always get past that room with the firecracker if the orange lizards are in the tunnel network. Hello, welcome to the stream. And hello to anyone who's joined recently. One of my tunnels break everything. The problem is that, um, the, the, the problem with the spore puff is that when, when do you want to use it, right? It's like, it's like an, an item in an RPG, like when, when is the best time to use this against like the final boss? But there is no final boss and they're all random. Like eight seconds. Yeah, here here's some firecrackers, but this isn't a good spot for them because there's usually a bunch of mirrors birds and centipedes here. But I'm pretty sure there's one. Yeah, there definitely are some that you could pick up. This this tunnel right here. This is where there's usually a centipede blocking your path. The more firecracker. So there, there's a lot in subterranean that you could pick up, but I think the one at the very beginning is still the best. Okay, yeah, I think some too. Specifically, these. Yeah, those firecrackers right there. You can pick those up pretty quickly. How far is this? We're a bit under halfway. The whole run takes about 50, 50 minutes. I don't know if it's like closer to 50 or closer to an hour. I guess I'll check real quick. Fifty-five. Okay, so about halfway. Um, I think like a low fifty is possible. Um, like a 52, maybe? I remember that my run has quite a lot of um, mistakes and has a death. And... I mean, ideally, I'm not going to be dying at all, okay? If I die, I reset. If I don't die, then I finish the run. And then if I finish the run, usually the time is fairly consistent. And that is like up to the skill. What is the difference between a normal run and a practice run? The main difference for me is a mod that disables creatures. You're not going to be seeing any creatures in this run. And that makes it, um... It makes it very consistent, obviously. It's very easy to make it to the end when there's no creatures that can kill you. Um, 
And the main reason I, I do that is to practice movement independently of creature RNG. Now, obviously, creatures are... Oh, these guys aren't disabled. <laughs> Probably do that. I guess, I guess it's fine because they're usually pretty static. But, um... Uh, like, obviously, dealing with creatures is also important. So that's an important skill to learn. But uh, most of the time, I'd like to you know, practice that and movement independently. If I want to practice the movement in the, the final areas of the run, then I have to get through the entire rest of the run to get there, to even have a chance to practice it. Which means that um, you know, I'm much more likely to die to like, random stuff like creatures getting in the way before I even get there. So, turning off um, creatures means that I'm much more likely to make it through the entire run in one attempt, so that my practice will be evenly distributed across the whole run, instead of only, like instead of it being um, unevenly weighted towards the beginning of the run, because you're more likely to practice that movement as you reset runs from dying to stuff. I'm actually... Not many people do practice runs with no creatures. Actually, not many people speedrun this game. Um, but, um, another way, another kind of practice run is just a run where you don't reset if you die. So normally in a speed run, you know, dying loses you a lot of time if they restart from your last shelter. Um, so if you die, you'll, if you, if you die and you lose a lot of time, you'll reset the run and try to, to get a better run where you don't die. But you could say a practice run is a run where you don't reset. And just try to just just try to make it to the end of the run, regardless of what happens. That could also be considered a practice run. The giant jellyfish suck at killing stuff. That's true, but they're also still dangerous. Don't underestimate them. I've died to them several times in a speed run. Have we died to a stowaway in a practice run? Uh, or a speed run? No. They're very easy to avoid. And usually aren't, they don't even exist anyway. <laughs> There's like a few in undergrowth, but we, we don't, I don't think we even go there. Actually, do we even see a stowaway in this run? I don't think so. This is, this is probably where you, the, where you get the coldest in the whole run. You have to go through a lot of water and shoreline and then travel quite far when it's a very light latent cycle. Yeah, even if you get grabbed by a stowaway, you could probably just pick up an item and throw it at them to release yourself. If you have a spear in this room, you can use it to throw boost a lot, because you still gain speed from throwing a spear, but you don't throw it very far, so it's pretty easy to pick it up right afterwards, and you can just throw boost with it again, over and over again, throughout the whole room. Once you get to this point, you get warmed up pretty much instantly. Yeah, the cold is not a problem at all in this run. Yeah, when you when you get when a stowaway grabs you, they stun you, but then you wake up before they even like eat you. You have a chance to throw. Then I don't think you drop your items. I'm pretty sure you don't. There's a jellyfish in this room. Also, um, I forgot to mention this, but since the or I have not played um, Saint. Hence the updates, which um, made Mirror's Vultures less aggressive. I 
don't know if I can believe that. I imagine that it's probably not going to affect this run too much. I think I think the main thing that it impacts is that if you're in a room with other creatures and a mirror's vulture shows up, they're more likely to target those other creatures instead of you. Or if you are hiding and a mirror's vulture is trying to get you, they're more likely to give up or they will give up sooner and like leave you alone um, compared to before. Which usually doesn't happen in a speedrun. We're either trying to, to like keep moving, if possible. You don't want to like hide and wait for them to move. But I guess if you had to, that's more consistent. Man, he's in Spear Master. I don't even think you see many Mirror Soldiers in Spear Master, though. They're pretty rare. Um, the problem is that most of the time when you see Mirror Soldiers, they're going to be you're going to be in a room with them alone. So you're the only target anyway, and the aggression change doesn't really matter. Shoot, I don't have enough food. Oh, I think, I think you're, okay, I, I did the routing wrong. You're supposed to eat the, the fly mold, and then you pick up the fruits later. So, I guess I'll just reverse the order of that. But I need to get one more piece of food now. Obviously, overall, the change is nice for the Rear Soldier's aggression, but um, for the, this particular speedrun, it doesn't make a huge difference. I don't think so. Now, the bad thing is that it takes a long time to get food from this point. You have to go quite far. Firebugs. They, they could potentially target firebugs instead of the slug cat. The, the main part, the, the main thing that's dangerous about Mirror's Birds or Mirror's Vultures in Rubicon is those really long horizontal rooms um, around like the where right around where the, the split path is. Right where the split is, there's two paths, and those those paths start with a long area where um, Mirror Sculptures like to show up. And that's where you're most likely to die to them, because they can just like swoop down and kill you within like a few seconds, and it's very hard to react to or find a place to hide. And I think that's probably still just as likely to happen, even if they're technically less aggressive. This is not the right path, but whatever. Actually, does does that does that matter? If you if you have a region full of creatures and many areas where vulture could show up, let's use regular vultures as, as an example here. So let's say you're, you're in chimney canopy, and the region is full of creatures, right? There's lizards everywhere. There's some um, some drop wings, some spiders, you know, regular array of creatures as you'd expect. Is the vulture more likely to show up against a creature that they are more aggressive towards? Like, do they have a look at all the rooms and say, oh, this room has a creature that I want to eat. I'm going to go into this room. And if, if the slug guy is low on that list, that means you're less likely to see vultures because they're going to be attacking the lizards. They're going to be attacking the other creatures, you know. Or is it like they just show up in a room randomly? Regardless, because if that's how it works, then the change actually does matter in Rubicon. The Mirror Soldiers might hunt some other random creatures. Who knows what they'd actually eat? Um, but they might be less likely to show up in the room where you're in. Um, 
instead preferring some other room, I don't know. If there's some other creature that shows up in Rubicon that the Mirror Sculptures prefer over Slug Gats, then maybe that would make a difference. They, target, they choose the random room first. Kind of what I was thinking. But you'll notice sometimes when playing like um, Artificer Story Percent, right at the very beginning of the run, you want to get a Vulture Mask, right? And sometimes you don't see any Vultures, it's like, where, where did the Vulture Slug go? But then you head to the next room over, and there's like three Vultures there. So for some reason, all the Vultures decide to go to that room, and that's why you're not seeing any. I don't know. I feel like I have to do a lot of runs to, to get a feel for it to see if there's any difference. next room, you're likely to see a spitter spider. Oops. Oops, okay, that's kind of bad. Actually, I can fly, I don't know why I did that. Already forgot. Yeah, there's usually a spitter spider in this room, but I don't even, I don't even think you'd want to deal with them, because they're they can be in a lot of different spots. It might be hard to hit them with, like, a spore puff or something. Yes, yeah, story percent. The difference between story percent and any percent is visiting the, the iterators. If I was doing any percent, I would not be doing this right now. This is, yeah, this is story percent. Please. Those are the wrong buttons. Hello, welcome to the stream. Yeah, and, and now you have the option to just ascend creatures that are in your way. Which is why the firecracker is probably really useful against the orange lizards. Because um, if you ascend them, they're just going to stay in the tunnel and be stuck, like, you have to push them out of the way or something. And you have to, like, you have to ascend each one individually. But now it's, or with the, the firecracker, it's like they all will run away and hopefully, like, leave the tunnels so you can, you can pass them. I think vultures should really prioritize lizards over the slug cat. That feels most natural, I think. I don't. I actually do not have any items stored at all. Which is why we're talking about an alternative. 
I have a, actually I have a spore puff in my stomach right now, and I'm gonna bring it to the very end of the run, just so I can have it for future runs. I think a spore puff is what I'm gonna use. I think it's most early, or it's most useful early in the run, and this and a firecracker I'll pick up later for the more scissors. That's my current strategy. But if you could think of any items that might be better than those, do let me know. I guess the other option I'm thinking of is a Neuron, so I can glow at sort of a run. Sort of every run, it'll make frustration a lot easier. Some parts of, um, like the beginning of Undergrowth, there's spiders in that room. Maybe, um, the wolf spiders will be more likely to leave me alone in, like, farm raids or subterranean. Can't see the Neuron Instinct. It doesn't work, you can't get the glow. You can eat neurons for the monk passage, but not the saints can't eat it. Can't eat it, can't store it. You just can't interact with neurons at all. Um, going in this direction. I thought that would work. Singularity bomb sounds like a fun idea, but I don't I don't even think you can get them as Saint. They might not be attainable at all. Even then, they might be a little bit too destructive to be useful. It looks like jellyfish should always drop you when you leave the water. That seems pretty consistent. I don't even think Elite Scavengers spawn for Saint. I don't know, it looks like I'm glowing. Doesn't it? Kind of looks like I'm glowing, right? This is, this is just a little science experiment. Not what you normally do in the speedrun. Obviously, it's not necessary. She dies anyway.
He already forgot. Hello, I'm taking other neurons. Hey. Just took it out of my hand. Huh. Okay, actually, you might not be able to swallow it at all. That's strange. So I have nothing in my stomach. Take this rock. Okay, I can eat a rock. Neuron. Nothing. So you, you can eat them, but you can't store them. That is strange. I guess you could like bring her multiple neurons or something. Maybe they just want to prevent that. Okay, well, that was fun. I guess it's intended, because you can bring items with you between save files, so bringing another neuron would be strange, because they need to give her, like, more neuron dialogue, so just, just a way to prevent that, I guess. Into the stream. Because her normal dialogue is like talking about pebbles, right? Because the only way to get neurons for Moon is to is from pebbles, right? But Pebble doesn't have any neurons now, so she should have to have like. like I guess it gets it would be kind of strange out like like huh? Where do you get this neuron? There's literally no options. Like, unless you came from another very distant iterator that was still functioning. And then brought the neuron all, <clears throat> all the way over here. I, I really I really think that they she should have some sort of dialogue. So many people visit Moon. Even if they aren't trying to ascend her, just to, like, hey, I got this, like, overpowered ability, and I can send stuff. Do you have any comments about this? But she just says nothing, so it's a bit strange. And for some people who don't want to ascend her, they think that it's not, um, not worthwhile. Or, or like, it feels underwhelming. Like, I, I, put, I put in the effort to come over here to Moon, and she doesn't, have, she doesn't even have anything to say. I think that at least scavengers have just gone past Hunter in the timeline. Maybe if you lineage them. Whoops, hold up, this I'm going too far. Unless I don't need this. And I'm pretty sure that the only the only way that they the only way that the scavengers had access to single day bombs was from Metropolis. Some scavenging like pebbles. They do spawn a saint. Someone confirm that. There's an Elise lineage and chimney for Gourmand and Monk. Because I imagine that the um, 
the Singularity Bomb, the scavengers get from scavenging pebble structure at the top of Metropolis. Um, not not from Uncle for Survivor. Okay. And after, um, of course, pebbles has collapsed at this point, but also before that's when uh, Artie like killed everyone up there. There's definitely still still some scavengers left, but the like the chieftain's gone. They probably have like less reason to stay up there. Um, this is the wrong way. Go down here, and then, yeah. I should let you take the refraction cell. What would you do with it? Just to float around? Also, um, things like bombs are, like, extremely rare. I don't even think I've seen any... I mean, like, I don't think I've ever seen a lead scavenger holding a singularity bomb. Um, in-game, like, in, in arena mode, they're way more common. So it's... I don't think it'd be, like, strange... Or, I think it's pretty normal if there was, like... Only, like, a, like a few dozen singularity bombs, like, in existence that the scavengers have. And maybe they just used them all up by this time, by this point in the timeline. Um, and then, like, they don't have, like have a way to get them back, or, or they're just like—I mean, th there's probably not too many because they're from like refraction cells, right? And those, there's probably not too many of those in a single iterator. Movement already is bad. You can't find the refraction cell room at Saint, and it's a little scavenger hideout. It's like a merchant, I think. They have no idea what was there before. They just think it's a nice little, nice little cave to hide in. Although it's a horrible place to be because there's like red centipedes everywhere. And other like spiders and such. I always like there's a red city beating around that area. worth exploring the alternate routes through this room. Or just do that. Perfection scavenger. The previous song that was playing was the one that plays in the Void Sea. That sounds kind of similar to the song. This is actually Sundown that plays in the main menu.
should be a void worm boss. I don't think there should be any bosses in Rain World at all. Hmm. This is where you die instantly when you when you enter this room. Could you potentially use a Snigurity Bomb to kill these Guardians? These guardians are immune to dev conflict kill commands. Okay. Those are they're they're pretty much entirely different creatures compared to the guardians that you normally see in the depths. Makes sense, like you're only supposed to kill them with the ascension. Nope, the whiplash state stays even when you're flying. This is the room where you'd use the firecracker. Hopefully the, the lizards would move down. It's right here. It's those tunnels, if they get stuck in there, it's a huge pain. Clear them out. But that's the very end of the run right here. So I'm going to go through the entire ending sequence. It's going to take another like 10 minutes. I have a sport. Wait, do I? Yep. Spore puff in stomach. I'll take this into the next run. Is that tongue? For like one, one second there. really fun things you can do here. And by really fun, I mean going down. Yeah, this is gonna this is gonna take a while. But that was a pretty good run considering that I spent a lot of time eating moon's neurons. I think it must be kinda awkward for them. Two iterator puppets sharing the same room. Like the, the wires would get all tangled up or something. Like, do the rails even, like, let the 
things pass over each other. Chickens. <laughs> Hello, welcome to the stream. This is a practice run. I'm testing out it's bringing some new items in your stomach to a new run. I used to have a lantern in my stomach all the time, but it's actually not necessary at all. I guess it lets you see a little bit in some dark areas, but not really useful for going faster. So I'm thinking of other items to bring, and I've decided on a spore puff. If there's ever a spider or a centipede blocking your path in a tunnel, you can just kill them. And if it's a spider, you can actually move faster by holding the spider corpse. This is very fitting music right now. I'm doing sort of percent. Hold up, I'm actually... Yep, this is my first time playing Saint. This ending is so crazy. I'm speechless. Hell King. I guess. Does it not have enough images? I have a feeling that I, I did the run so fast that it did not take enough screenshots to to show the, the whole like run. I mean I don't know how how this um whole system works. I assume that it just like takes a screenshot of the game every so minutes and then it just like shows them in an order that is like spread out across the whole run but also chronological, right? But if there's just not enough screenshots, then it can't um, fill out the whole, um, the whole run. Or, like, all those images that it shows at the end. Possible to view this screenshot in the files. Well, I have no idea where to find them. I 
guess you could check then, like, how often does it take the screenshots? Any day now. I do feel like this cutscene ending sequence does take a little bit too long. Maybe the, the, the void worm could show up a little bit sooner and maybe the sequence could start a little bit sooner and end a little bit faster. Not like it's a huge deal. For the sake of speedruns, the timer ends way before the you get to that point, right? And casually, you're only gonna get this ending once, so yeah. And I guess on this save file, this is kind of the first time that I've beaten Saints, right? Because I did reset my progress not too long ago. Rubicon content is now available in Arena, man. Anyway. Let me do that again. I should have the Spore Puff now. I guess I'll check that right away. Yep. So now I'll permanently have a Spore Puff. For all future runs. If I should make save files, make a save file for each item that you could start a saint run with, and just like give them out and be like, hey guys, if you want to run saint, you know, pick which item that you want from these save files. Play Minecraft. That's a great idea. Let me go do that instead of speedrun. This is still practice. I didn't change any of the mods. The firecracker rarely gets them out of the way, but you can ascend them. Okay, well, I'll have, to, I'll have to test that myself then and see what that looks like. If it's consistent, that's still nice, but...
That was nice. Maybe I'll test a few of those things at the end of the stream. I can test the... Uh, well, I mean, Spore Huff not really necessary, but maybe the, the Oris Lizards. Maybe if you want, you can also test out if a flashbang works against red lizards in that other room. But you know, there's a lot of different places the red lizards could be. Or they could like try to attack you while you're trying to kill the guardian. That that could be a situation too. Like, let's say that the, the Guardian, you're trying to kill the Guardian and the, the Red Lizards are, like, spitting at you, which will reset your your ability. So what if you, like, throw a, a, a flashbang at them so that they can't see you and they can't spit at you, so you can just, like, um focus on the Guardians? I don't know if that would work. But that's also a, a much more specific scenario compared to the Orange Lizards that are always there. Or, they're most of the time they're there, you know. They're in the same room, roughly, but they, they might be a different, um parts of the room. <laughs> Strongest entity in the game is corn. Yeah, the Sky Evans room. Or maybe in the Mirrorsburg room. Are um are flashbangs effective against Mirror's vultures? I, I assume that they should be, right? Maybe maybe you could use those to escape that room. Hmm. But if if the if the if the the firecracker works pretty well, then I guess that's also part of the, the next best option still. Does work on Mirror's Vultures? Hmm, that might be another good option. But the, the Oris is such a pain to deal with. At the very end of the run. They are still a little bit jank. They're not 100% consistent. But they're probably better. Just by a bit. I keep getting stuck in there.
Whoa. <laughs> that was cool. So we, what, what would probably be the best thing to do is to um, use the, the, the flashbang to kill the, the red lizards. And that would give you plenty of time to then go and kill the, the guardian with no, no other threats. But there's two red lizards they have to deal with. And if you like only send one of them and the other one is like in another room and then they, they come in, they would be a problem. I'll have to see how you can use the uh, the firecracker on the orange lizards. I'll have to see how that works. But if that is if that is consistent, then it probably is the best option. Let's say okay. What if the orange lizards are not in the pipe, but they're like about to enter it, right? So as so you enter the room, it looks like that it's clear and there's no orange lizards. But the moment you enter the pipe, like the orange lizards start walking in, right? If you throw a firecracker then, do they leave the pipes, or do they, like, still stick around that area? I've also noticed that these new yeeks are harder to get past when you're in a tunnel. It used to be really easy just to slide, or to, to like, just slide past them in there. Then they can run back. So, okay. So if they're already in the pipe, then they don't, they don't leave it, but they like get close to leaving it. And if they're not in the pipe yet, then they just leave completely. Okay, okay. Oops, wrong way. I will go test that later, but that's good information. Thank you, didn't mean to do that. Oops. I don't know what happened there. your strats to do. <laughs> nice jump. They still don't jump all the time. As they just don't bother. Also, you can't get a jump out of the water. I don't know if that was always the case, though. So. 
So most of the time they'll clear out of one exit that you can use to, to leave. Do you have to kill the orcs lizards first? Can you just like leave while they're running to that spot, or do they they still block the path? It's probably better that I go test it myself instead of just asking a ton of questions. I'll I'll, I'll understand it better. the movement to the next room correctly this time. And I've already messed it up. I mean actually the next next room. Yeah this one. There's usually a spider spider in this room. I guess actually I, I think about it, or thinking about it a bit more, you can hold on to your item, your stomach item, for a lot longer than normal. Because a lot of the time you're just heading to an echo, right? So if you use that item and then see the echo, you're gonna get the item back when you return to the shelter. So a lot of the time the items are reusable. You have multiple chances to um to make use of them. So, like, if you use the Spore Puff to get rid of the spider, you might just get it back in time to use it against the centipede later, right? Like, I could totally take the Spore Puff now and just have it for this area, although you probably shouldn't do that because of the, um, the mother spiders. But, you know, they, they um, you have the option to. Whatever the item is that you decide to carry in your stomach, you can um, use it multiple times. But not if you want to use it on your way to like a shelter. Like for, for farm rays, the farm rays spiders, if you use the spore buff there, then you wouldn't be able to... You would shelter and no longer have it in your stomach permanently. You probably wouldn't want to use it there. Oh, right. So you can just kill them with the same... Or they just die in the same, like, spore cloud. That makes sense. So you might as well bring the spore buff in this area if you want. But usually they don't really get in your way. The spiders might grab onto you, but 
they're, they're usually not a problem. I guess actually I don't have a, any like light source. Like if I had a lantern, they'd be scared of it. But um, they might be a little bit more aggressive without that. Do firecrackers scare away um, spiders or centipedes? They do. Work, they work on centipedes, right? Hmm. They might actually firecrackers might actually be better. You could scare away li lizards, like mole lizards, or um, centipedes, and then maybe spiders too. I don't, I don't know if they work on spiders though. I'm kind of assuming that they don't. Yeah, they definitely work on centipedes. You can, like, if they've grabbed you and, and there's a, a firecracker explosion nearby, then they, they do drop you. But also, if you throw a firecracker in a tunnel, you're likely to, like, stun yourself. And, you know, Saint is pretty weak. They might actually get injured by that. I don't know if that's true. They might just stun you for a little bit, like normal. Yeah, the, the the wiki page doesn't really say anything about them at all. They scare away lizards. Can't die to it. Feels like a, a, a snail will like stun you for a little bit and then you're injured. Or I mean, for for saying you get stunned for a long time, right? So maybe so I thought that maybe with like the, the it's the same. That was more consistent. Trying to get stuck on something. You're trying to climb up.
Yeah, I should have been more careful there. They're, they're shocking something in there. In that mass of tentacles. I just, I just remembered Calamity, the Calamity mod, um, it's getting a, a big update pretty soon. By soon, I mean it might have already happened. I know there's a trailer for it. I don't know if that trailer had like a release date or if it was like already out. For the clammy mod. Don't wanna don't wanna fling yourself into the sky. How many updates are so strange, in my opinion? Like, reworking items and bosses and such completely is like a pretty normal thing for Calamity. Yeah, like an item might have been reworked already, but it might just receive another rework, because why not? Maybe, maybe I'll stream that. An update makes it a bit more interesting. The song already played in Sonic Construct last run. off the water. I 
Probably not necessary to breathe there. That little air pocket. Probably just make it across the whole thing. So, okay, remember, eat this food over here. That was fast. You can just slide through that. I've never tried that before, but uh, it actually seems to be pretty good. to waste time looking for food. Okay, this is just Sundown playing again, right? Yeah. <laughs> Some of these songs are playing multiple times. Maybe it's because I picked one of the songs manually. I messed with the randomization, the shuffle. Boat of the true or the troll lizard. Get a little bit more speed going here. There's, I got a pull hop there, and that would be slowing me down. Something that I do like about Saint, and that I kind of want to see in more games, is the fact that you can build up a lot of speed by slowing down a little bit. So the, the more height that you gain, the more of that height you can convert into speed with your, with your grapple, right? So you want to basically get up as high as possible, and then swing with all of that speed and then try to maintain that speed for as long as possible, right? I think that's really fun about Saint. Like, you're, it's not like you're gonna build up speed instantly and you're constantly just moving at full speed. No, it's like, you gotta you gotta build it up or you gotta slow down a bit and then build up full speed, you know? That kind of gameplay is pretty interesting. fun to do that.
They really made good use of that distortion effect. Right when you activate the ability, it shows up for like a split second. It's the same effect that they... I, I think that it's the same effect that they use for like, Singularity Bombs. Um, where else? There, there's some other place. It's usually a few places. Maybe Echoes too. Also, um, I've heard a little bit of discussion about this regarding Saint speedruns, but um, I don't think it's actually faster to use the flights inside of tunnels to move faster. Because yes, compared to your regular like crawling speed, it's faster to be flying while you move through tunnels. However, um, you cannot like um, boost off of corners like this. I mean, if you, you can do it, but I think it immediately cancels the flights, so you only ever do it once. And maybe in that case, it would be faster. Whoops, we're not going that way. To enter a pipe with the flights to move faster, and then you um, immediately cancel it once you get a corner boost. But honestly, I don't even think that it's worth doing it at all. If you want to conserve your ability for when you want to use it, for when you want to send it to creatures. And then, you know, just using corner boosts regularly when moving through tunnels, it's pretty fast anyway, right? I think that it's actually pretty much the same speed. Could do some comparisons a while ago. That effect too, right when you blow up the or when you ascend the iterator, it's the same um, same effect that, the, that distortion. Yeah, whatever, what did happen to the Echo? Are they still alive somewhere? Are they, like, crushed between Iterator and Shaded, Old Shaded? You can't find them anymore. I, I like to imagine that there's actually a lot of Echoes that you just can't see. And that there's only a handful that you actually get to perceive, but, like, in reality, there's a lot more that are just more hidden. Either somewhere else in the world or somewhere where you don't have access to, or maybe you're like not attuned to them. Whatever that might mean. So that was still that they're probably still around somewhere, but um and also we know that they they can move, right? Echo that was on top of the wall is now on the leg. It's the same echo. They just decided to move. Or maybe they didn't decide, they just kind of ended up moving. Who knows? It has been a while since Saint, so I'm playing it again. I always knew that this, this run was improvable. Especially like my most recent attempt it has like a whole lot of problems with it. Kind of just taking those. Oops. Yeah, I, 
continues to eat one of those fruits. This is currently a practice run. I'm probably only going to do practice runs today. Because after this run, I want to test a few things. A few new strategies. I manage that a little bit better. Kind of ran out when I still wanted to use it. I guess if you had the, um, if you saw the score prep at that point in the run, you would want to throw it away in the gates. Right. Or maybe just hold on to it because there's some more centipedes in subterranean that you might want to deal with. Actually, yeah, that's probably better. I mean, obviously you can just, um, ascend them now if you want to, but just throwing a score prep is much faster. If it works immediately, which, I mean, it might take a while. So who knows? But I probably want to just hold on to it. <laughs> Movement like that is what makes this run really fun. You know, to swing through these rooms so quickly, and then die to a mirror sword that you couldn't even react to. Good times. There's also a drop wig in this room. It's one of the handful of drop wigs that are still remaining. Oh yeah, that's a fun thing to do. I think there's some drop wigs in undergrowth, but otherwise they're super rare for saints, which is nice. I need to do the thing that I did before where I would um fly for a little bit just to slow down so I don't take fall damage there. I guess you can also roll but you might like struggle to get back into the pipe. A baby centipede across the entire bottom part of undergrowth. Just to distract the drop wood. You couldn't like throw a rock at it or something? Or just run past it? Oops, 
Don't do that. True passive is start with their rocks. So yeah, yeah, sorry. What, what am I thinking? As the saint, saint would never kill anything or try to harm them in some way. I guess that is kind of true, right? Like the saint passage doesn't let you throw rocks at creatures. Somehow forgot too much in the saint mindset. The, the better option is to sacrifice a baby centipede so that you can go on. Oh shoot, red centipede. The one creature that I don't have disabled. That's way better than going down that other tunnel. By the way, there's a shelter on the left side of that room, and I recommend taking it if you can't get through Rubicon safely, or if you think that you might die in Rubicon. It's a good safety shelter. Is that roughly the halfway? Well, maybe not, but... It's like sort of halfway. You're, you're likely to die like right here, so it's, it's pretty close to that point. Well, that was kind of bad. Like when the tongue just like kind of orbits you. That's kind of loud. But I was running really low on flight to juice there. Actually, probably. I, I might not uh, have enough for this guy. Very close. I'm gonna have to wait a little bit in the next room, though. Or actually not. That was still pretty fast despite not flying at all.
No, I got the rock. I was gonna use that. Hi, Pebbles. Where's Moon? <laughs> well, okay, I forgot to get Moon. That's why this run is so fast. I'm saying, like, this is a really good pace. It's because I didn't get Moon. I would have taken a good extra few minutes. I'm gonna check how long did it take to get Moon last run, and I'm gonna add that time to this. Oh, I can't actually use that time because I was messing around a whole lot. Well, I, I can sort of use it. So this was 39.22. And I get to moon at, okay, it takes about two minutes. That, that's the simple way of saying it. So this run was basically a 52, 19, 20. Which is, in comparison to the current world record, about a three minute improvement, a bit more than three minutes. See, that's that's the kind of improvement that I'm looking for when I do attempts again. A few minutes. Which kind of sounds crazy, <laughs> like a few minutes from a, from a speed run, but you know, I know it's possible. That, of course, is assuming that I can get past those handful of really difficult run rooms, right? And if I don't forget to visit Moon, that's important. Um, I do actually have time for another run, but I'm not going to do that. Let's do some testing, not in arena mode. Just to enable a bunch of other mods here. Want you, and you, and then... I mainly want to, want to test one particular thing, which is which is the orange lizards. But I might also test um, sub training with the spore puff. Maybe I'll just I'll just like warp to the beginning, and just see if I can continue the run from there. Because sub training is, I think, the main place where I'm going to be able to use spore puffs. longer to set this up. I mean, what use the spur up for the to get the, the firecracker? Why not just like bring the firecracker from the beginning then? Um, yeah, we're almost ready to, to start again. I think that's what you're talking about. Just 
this is actually closer to an 80% climb. What is the current run for that? Hmm. Wow, 80% can be improved a lot. <laughs> Well, actually, that's that's surprising. Okay, well, that's it's not actually too surprising because I did any percents like almost a year ago. Um, let's just make it to the shelter. The any percent run is about 53 minutes, which is only two minutes faster than the world record for story percents. And I got 50 minutes, or almost exactly 50 minutes, when just getting pebbles and not moon, which means if I skip pebbles too, which also changes some of the routing and to make it better. Any percent could probably get a lot, a lot faster. I might actually do that. Should I do some any percent attempts now? I don't know. I also don't want to be like too distracted from attempting sort of percents. Doing any percent kind of feels like you're doing the same category, but for twice as much. Like you have to do the run twice as much because you're, you're spread across two different categories that are very similar. Um, where should I go to test this? Because I, I want to make sure that it's, like, mostly accurate, right? Let's actually, let's, um, get to, let's do, let's do it like this. Um. go to, there are different names, Primordial Underground, and then go somewhere in here, I don't know which one of these rooms it is. This room is here, yeah. Oh wait, right, I don't have enough karma. Okay, let's uh, just go straight to Rubicon. Hello, YouTube chat. Welcome back. Actually, just kidding. Nothing changed. Rubicon. Let's go to... Rubicon is huge, and it has like 2,000 rooms. Yeah, hello. For no reason. Okay, Rubicon, let's go to... This room. I do not have dev console, unless that's something else. Um, no, you suck. I can't kill you. Okay, there we go. It just lets you set your karma. That would be really convenient to have as part of dev tools. Um, can I find one room in a thousand? There it is. I realized. You need to turn this off. Is ascension. Okay.
So this is gonna take a long time. I guess I'll just warp to every individual echo. All right, now we're, now we're doing a quick um, store percent speed run. Or any percent, actually. Oh, so that's a tutorial message down there. It's like, you can use warm, ob warm objects to heat yourself up, but they don't last forever. It's literally just wrong. Like, they, they do last forever, actually. The, the main challenge here is remembering the name of the regions. That's the wrong room. I'm just gonna keep talking. Okay. <laughs> Cause I didn't I didn't move the camera down, I was I was way over here. At least it still gives you the karma, right? Even if you die. Desolate fields. Oh, the echo effect was gone for a second. That's kind of weird. Echo with no echo. Actually, can you just do that with depth pools? Probably, right? So if we go to Emerald Real Underground. Whatever this room is. So here's an echo. Oh yeah. It just actually just breaks the effects. That's that's weird. Can I do this too? Probably not. I don't really know how to use this whole menu. That's that's cool. He doesn't have the distortion. That took a while to, to load in. A lot of S regions. Where is this one room? There it is. There's only one left. Um, where is it? Which one have I not gotten yet? Undergrowth. 
that this is the, the right music for it too. And this tiny little echo. Flashbang. Okay, so here's, the, here's all the karma. Finally. And we're just gonna go straight to that, that, um, shelter. Or maybe, maybe the, the closer shelter. Hold up, there, there's one, in, um, yeah, I'll go to the closer shelter. This is so well, very well categorized. You see the, the ascension go over the UI? That's funny. Like, the, this goes over the text on the bottom. Yeah, it actually goes over all the UI. That's funny. Find the cursor, that's still there. That's a fire bug, I think. This wonderful room. Let's see, usually we just kind of keep moving forward and like kind of keep pace with the, the mirror's birds. Hold up, did I just... Yeah, you could just do the rivet the thing and just do a standing or do like a roll pounce after a normal jump. Just blew myself up. Is that roughly the strategy? Did I do that correctly? He did run to that. He did run to that spot. You can ascend them from inside the pipe. Pretty much. I assume that it, I should probably take out the the firecracker before entering that room. There's actually a room earlier where it's like, uh, you have some time to take it out. Throw it before entering the pipes. I mean, it wasn't horrible the way that it worked out. Like, I did get stunned for a second, but it wasn't too bad. And I kind of want to have the extra time, just in case, you know. I'd rather play it safe. For that room at the very, very end of the run, literally the last place you can die. I guess you could die in the next few rooms if it rains, but 
Probably not going to be a problem. That was an interesting jump. Be, be careful, don't accidentally tongue that guy. He's not a fan. Okay, see, that's not a, they, they didn't fix that. That still happens. Hang on, hold on, I'm watching that back. There, okay, what happened was that a mirror spurred on the right side of that room. Well, they're, they're still on screen, but they're further to the right. The moment I enter the room, they teleport to my location and kill me instantly. The, the like, frame that I enter the, the room. Like, the, the, the actually the frame that I come out of the pipe, the mirror spurred teleports to your location and kills you. What? That actually, like, that should be fixed. <laughs> that is, that is so jank. Oh, nice, this song. why that happens. That is so strange. It's kind of like a like a bat spear, you know, when you enter a room a creature gets teleported to your location. It's kind of like that, except that the creature instantly kills you. So if you're here and it's like safe, okay, take out the firecracker. And here it's actually completely cleared out. I don't know if that guy was still scared or if he was like still running away, sort of. I think he could have bitten me if he had the chance. Maybe in that case, it's actually worth it to send him anyway. Hmm. They were trying to return to their den. Is that the case? Like, um, something can happen on the wall when the white are running from the rain, where even though they're not, they're like, they're running from the rain, they're not really interested in you. If you get in the way, they're still gonna, gonna just kill you. Can that kind of thing happen? Like, they're, they're running away, but you're just kind of, you're just kind of in the way, so they just kill you anyway.
Okay, that time it just didn't work at all. They were just running everywhere. Hmm. Probably should have. I mean, I kind of like waiting a little bit longer to throw it. Yes, they can bite you. Okay. Or I guess I should, like, if I see them already in the pipe, I should just, like, start ascending them, like, right away. Don't try to, like, get in before they do. Okay, so that that's like what should happen most of the time, right? They they clump up here, you kill them, and then you can take this path. Right? And then this this guy was probably like running away, right? So so if they're like around this area, then they're not gonna be a problem. And if they're right here, you can ascend them. Alright. That that's pretty good then. Layers of reality. Oh, this is, this is this room. Okay, well, that's probably it for this stream. I'm really um, interested in these new strategies. They might help with making this category a lot more consistent. I'll probably be doing attempts tomorrow, not practice runs. I'll just try out the speedrun with the, the new items. We'll see how that goes. So anyway, thanks everyone for watching. Thanks for helping out with the testing. Oh, also. You still no, never mind. <laughs> yeah, thanks for everyone for watching. See ya.